was. I'm so sorry. What was the other guy that I, um, all right, pause the video, pause. Here we go. Here we go. Answering your questions, a little bit of a new strategy. We've done this in the past, but I want to be even more consistent moving forward where I am struggling so bad to answer all of your questions via email, Instagram, Strava. It's just a lot. It's a lot of questions. So therefore, in order to spread the answers to more and more people who I think can benefit from your great questions, whether it's about running shoes or injuries or training questions, I am planning uh, we're going to strive to every Saturday, okay, when you're watching this, it's Saturday, if you're watching on the day it publishes, uh, to do a Q&A, where I field your questions as best as possible. So that's the new game plan for all of your questions streaming in. Now, if I have time, I will reply uh, via the phone or the computer, but it just is challenging. So, and I want to respect your questions. That's why I'm recording the second video publishing today on the channel. Let's dive in. And this is What's nice about maybe this type of video is that uh, you could just watch in the background as you're cooking dinner, or sorry, listen in the background as you're cooking dinner, or stretching, or driving in the car, just make sure you're not watching the screen, uh, because it's gonna be more of talking rather than beautiful shots throughout. Although I will throw a little B-roll in every now and then. Okay, let's dive in to question number one. Here we go from uh, Cathal on Strava. He or she, I don't know, Cathal, uh, asks, sorry, sorry, I don't know, ask, hey all. Seth speaks a lot on this vlog about the benefits of two-hour runs. How many times a week uh, does he advise to do these? So Cathal, once a week is great. That is a great place to start. And in case you all didn't see that vlog for maybe a month and a half ago about the benefit of doing your long runs, especially over two hours, you can watch it upper right hand corner where I dive into more, a little bit more of the science behind the aerobic benefit of running for two plus hours. Now, in my training um, in Cathal and with everyone, remember I'm, I'm always talking about time and depending on your work schedule and life schedule, maybe you're, you're a, a university student right now and you might just have a little bit more time on your hands, it might be worth exploring the idea of doing two runs a week that go, now I don't know, you know, depending on your experience level, how much volume your body is used to, but doing two two-hour runs a week. I'd be curious to hear if you were able to drop your PR in the half marathon or marathon by doing that if you regularly, regularly run once a week for two hours. So, Cathal, start with once a week, that is plenty, and maybe, gosh, I would say like six to 12 months later, after consistent one, uh, once a week, two hour runs, you could consider adding, adding a second one. Thank you for the question from Strava. Moving on to John on YouTube. Question number two. Hey Seth, how do you keep all your running shoes so clean all the time? Can you mention it in one of your videos? John, I don't think I actually do. For example, here's the Skechers Max Road 4. It is caked in mud. Uh, now listen, I don't live in a very muddy location of the world. We don't get a ton of rain here. Uh, but uh, John on YouTube, if I do get muddy shoes, I simply take a brush just like this and I go, if it's the summertime, I just turn on the hose. If it's the, if it's the wintertime, I do it in the kitchen sink. Uh, True Love might be watching, sorry True Love. And I just scrub the shoes like this. Now, I'm a believer that you don't wanna immerse the shoes into water completely. I think water breaks down everything quicker, uh, whether it's the midsole foam. So I just run lukewarm, not blazing hot, not cold, lukewarm water over the shoe. And that's what I did with this one actually yesterday. You can see the difference there, hopefully. I did that with the Skechers Max Road 4 yesterday. So that's what I do. Maybe a little bit of Dawn dish soap, just a little bit, if the mud is really, really bad. Good question, John, on YouTube. All right, moving on. Pinofro on YouTube. Can we get a True Love One Day Vlog takeover, please? Pinofro, I agree completely. However, I'm not sure if True Love would agree. True Love, if you see this, uh, comment down below. Do you want to do a, a one day takeover, takeover of the vlog? Let us know, True Love. Listen, True Love is... Uh, she, she's not even on social media. It's just not her thing. So for her to do a takeover, I'm just not sure. But that's a good question, Pinafro. I agree, she should. She could have her own television station. You know, you know True Love, she's got the energy for it. So, all right, moving on to Jorge on YouTube. How do you st stretch with your foam roller, Jorge? You're in luck. Hopefully you see this. And uh, if you wanna dive more into it, everyone, uh, two or three months ago, I made a vlog about 
how I foam roll upper right hand corner. I would actually at this point, I need to add one more that um, I've added into the rotation since making that vlog. But in the meantime, Jorge, go check it out. It's probably, I think I share like five different ways that I use the foam roller. It's, uh, it's, I think it's pretty good detail. So Jorge, good question, but go check it out upper right hand corner. Moving on to Alex on Facebook. Thank you, Alex. And if you're wondering when I say Facebook, what does that mean? That is either the Facebook page, a uh, direct message to me, or the Demore Global Running Facebook group. Um, I'm picking up questions from there as well. He asks, hey Seth, what shoes would you recommend for long runs that will be able to last lots of miles? Great question, Alex. Oh man, oh boy, oh boy, Alex. So we're gonna go with the Nike Vomero 14, bada bing, bada boom, and the Asics Glide Ride. These shoes, uh, now unfortunately, the Vomero 14 didn't quite work out for me because of the lacing system. It just was hurting the top of my foot a little bit, but I was a rarity. I don't think that, that definitely did not happen to most of the people running in this shoe. I'm telling you, I think I put, I think I was around 180 miles in the Nike Vomero 14, and the tread pattern on the outsole is still, it's looking not brand new, but really, really good. I think you can get a lot of miles out of this shoe uh, Alex on Facebook. So the Nike Vomero 14 is one option for a long run. Granted, it's a little heavy, a little bulky. Um, and they, let, let's just say, like, I'm a lighter guy, but if you're like a, a big, strong person, you know, 250 plus pounds, and you just need a good, solid shoe, I think the Vomero 14 would be amazing. Or the Asics Glide Ride. You all have seen me talk a lot about this shoe recently. I am really enjoying it. And again, I think Asics is evolving and improving. And I think their build quality is second to none. I really mean just their construction of the shoe, the materials they're using. Um, I'm predicting at least 500 plus miles out of the glide ride, probably even closer to 750. No, no joke. Uh, it's just, it has that type of feel to it. And I think I'll be using this shoe, getting ready for the Houston Marathon at the middle distance uh, for my middle distance days and long runs for sure. So like 15 to 22 miles. Uh, it is a little heavy, just like the Vomero 14. Keep that in mind, but I love it. Hope that helps, Alex. Good question. Kane on Instagram. Hey, man, I'm thinking of getting a pair of shoes that are good for road and trail. My preferred choices at the moment are the Speed Goats or Pegasus 36 Trail. I'm asking you because you're beast with knowledge. Kane on Instagram. Thank you, Kane. So the Peg 36 Trail, solid choice. The Nike Wild Horse 5, solid choice. And where is it? Did I bring it out here? Um, what was the other one? Oh my goodness, I'm blanking, I'm blanking. Hold on, hold on, pause, pause, pause. I'm so sorry. What was the other guy that I, um, all right, pause the video, pause. I found it, I found it. Okay, Saucony Mad River TR. I think these three shoes could be used on the trails and on pavement easily. I love them both. Most of them, let's see, I think, I think they have five millimeter lug depth on these two and then on the Peg 36 trail, I think it's four, three to four. It definitely isn't five. If they're advertising five, that's a generous five millimeters. So this would be my three choices for a commuter shoe or yeah, commuter shoe from the roads to the trails, especially this Peg 36 trail. It's probably the best option, uh, but I would not count out the Nike Wild Horse 5 or the Saucony Mad River TR. They both, they just have the ride and the feel of a road shoe. They're just not overly aggressive for trails if that makes sense like it's it's different than the speed goat lineup of the evo speed goat or uh or definitely you know no solomon would really ever work a uh, trail shoe solomon would ever work for the roads moving on good question kane to aaron on instagram hey seth so track season is coming up and i am a freshman i was wondering your mile and two mile pr times from my freshman year in high school aaron you're testing me i have no idea but i'll make a guess i bet i aaron i just don't know and i should know I'm guessing my PR in the mile was around 525, putting that out to 520 to 525 for the mile, and I bet it was around 11. Actually, a number that's jumping out at me is um, is like 1110 as a freshman in the two mile. So not, I don't know, but I'm not blazing fast compared to some other freshman times out there. Um, I guess my message is, Aaron, keep believing, keep fighting. I'll just brag about my brother. Um, he's a little, he's four or five years younger than me. And I was able to coach him my, his senior year. And we did some good work. We worked hard. He was a basketball player in the winter. And then, so he did sprinting up and down the basketball floor all winter. 
and I, you know, we got him ready for track, and sure enough, we, uh, he went out to Arcadia, and he ran a 9.05, two mile, in high school. So um, I think he finished like top 10 at Arcadia, right around there. Um, so he's a beast, and so you can, Aaron, get faster and faster every single year because his progression was similar to mine, but then his senior year, he really threw down the hammer. All right, good question, Aaron. Hope that helps. Moving on to Michael via email. Hi, Seth, big fan of your blogs, and I should just mention via email, um, I try to answer emails like once every two weeks, just putting that out there because they just... They just, yeah, it's just, they just stream in. Um, hi, Seth. Big fan of your blogs. Just watched your video about running form and was wondering about my running form. I tend to bounce up and down a lot when running, and I was wondering if it was worth doing so, something about it, and if so, what? Michael, good question. I think that's actually a great, um, I would say it's a good thing to change. I've seen some other strides that are too bouncy, and because of, as a runner, we're trying to go forward. So if we're wasting too much energy going up and down, it's a waste of energy. And we're not pushing ourselves forward. Um, what to do about it, Michael? Whew, okay. I'd have to watch your stride. Um, I think it's the, okay. It's the, <laughs> I'm thinking kind of on the spot here, but it's like the launch, the launch angle of, I would say it's a lot of it would be connected, Michael, to your quads and like your, your upper cat, like how your quads and hamstrings but are launching you forward. It's, it's, they're probably, like I'm guessing your lower quads are doing too much work maybe and they're pushing, they're like pushing you up. It's like a bounce instead of an out. Oh, Michael. So I would, you know, just, you just have to try. You have to try to keep your feet maybe a little bit lower to the ground, but I do think your assessment of too much bounce is not a good thing, and I would agree with that. If you just if you watch the best runners in the world, they are not bouncing up and down. They're definitely pretty smooth, and they're going forward um, smoothly. Michael, I'm sorry. That I, have, I would have to watch your stride just to look at how your legs are in your feet, and your feet are reacting to the ground. Michael, if you see this, Email me personally, and I will watch your video, all right? But make sure you say your Michael from the Q&A. All right, moving on to August, uh, August on, on YouTube. Um, he says, what's your take on pronation shoes? So I think he means like stability shoes. I've done a simple gait cycle analysis, which showed that I pronate slightly. I've increased my cadence, cadence and become more of a midfoot striker. My idea is that a more stable shoe would be less important. Do you believe this to be true? And are there exercises that could change one's foot strike to be more neutral instead? There are more options among neutral shoes. I agree. And I do think, so great question. I do think people rely a little bit too much on stability shoes if they are, so I, listen, if you're over, if you're pronating or supinating a ton, I do think stability shoes are a good thing. But I think if you can work on your ankle strength using the stability disc that I've been using a lot lately at my house, I think that is a, a more effective way to deal with pronation or supination. Now, talk to your doctor, talk to your physical therapist about different exercises that you can do to strengthen your lower ankle and frankly, the muscles in your feet. Now, some people's feet are just, they're different. Like, and you know, that's just the reality. And there, you might not be able to correct how much your ankle is collapsing in or out. Um, but I would suspect if you found a dedicated um, training program to strengthening your lower legs, I bet you could at least straighten out that foot strike a little bit. And you might not be, you might not need to rely on stability shoes as much. Um, again, I think, I oh, and I should also mention, a little bit of pronation or supination is very normal. Um, I do it a little bit, okay? Like it's the it's the extreme that can cause injuries, like where you're really rotating in in a bad bad way. Uh, but a little bit, you know, the best runners in the world usually have just a little bit of pronation. And as you get older. I've noticed as I've gotten older and stronger that I, that I, that I uh, pronate less and less, okay? So good question from uh, August on YouTube. Moving on, three to go. Tyler on Instagram, any tips on marathon training? I started running this summer and I want to do a marathon next October, so October 2020. 
My goal is sub four. Is that the Houston or the sorry the Chicago Marathon? My goal is sub four hours. I have I have time to get ready, but maybe too much time. Any pointers? Thank you, Tyler on Instagram. He, that's from Tyler. So, uh, Tyler, I would say in March 2020, find a half marathon in March. Okay, so that way you have a goal to shoot for in the next four to five months. Because Tyler, you uh, you want to start building your aerobic base right now. Never too early to build your aerobic base. I would say it's too early to begin to start, let's say, you know, adding some speed work or um, even increasing your volume too high right now. Uh, so I would, I would pick a half marathon for March. So basically six months out from October 4th, 2020. And then um, three weeks out from October 4th, so sometime in September, I would do another half marathon or a 10 mile race, okay? Maybe four weeks out, three to four weeks out. Um, and, okay, maybe four weeks out, just to make sure you fully rest and recover before the marathon. But I do think it's important to get used to going that far um, before October 4th. And I would peak, I would have your volume peak out. So your highest weekly volume peak out. Um, basically five to six weeks out from the marathon. So one week out uh, before the half marathon, keeping in mind that half marathon is not your peak race. You're kind of training through the race, using it more as a practice run for your actual marathon. And then after the half marathon, let's say it's four weeks to go or three weeks to go, you basically start to taper, not quite, but you're starting to think about freshening up, not quite. Um, and this all depends on the overall training block usually a marathon training block. A lot of, a lot of uh, plans out there have a 12-week 12, 12 week plan. I think you could, you could do 12-week. I also think you could do 14-week, and you could probably get away with 10-week as well. So that's a general outline, Tyler, of maybe of how I would approach an October 4th, 2020 marathon. Good question, Tyler on Instagram. Okay, two to go. Juice on Instagram. Hey there, Seth. Wondering what should I be doing during winter break, break during winter, break uh, before track season. Swimming, base running, let me know, th thanks, and keep up the good work. So I would, uh, you can swim, you can do cross training, but I would run, I would run, keep running, maybe five days a week, okay, six days a week. I love seven days a week. If you feel like your body is built for it and you're strong enough and you don't, you're not injury prone, uh, but five, five days a week is, is good too. And base miles is great. I would not do just base miles. I would also do like 12 by 300 meters with a 100 meter jog on the track or even just on a grass soccer field, like a big grass soccer field complex for that soft landing. I don't think you need to be doing mile repeat, like seven by one mile repeats with one minute rest, like nothing crazy interval work, base miles, and but still a little bit of turnover. So 300 meter repeats or definitely strides once a week so like four by 125 meter strides, uh, that'll be great just to keep those legs reminding that, okay, we are getting ready for track season. Um, and then track usually starts in March. I would say, I would say the second week of February, you could start talking to your coach about, okay, maybe it's time to add some 1K repeats or some three, uh, uh, um, maybe, well, uh, maybe like three by two mile repeats controlled, very controlled, but just kind of getting that aerobic system going at a higher level. So good question from Juice on Instagram. Okay, one more. I know we're going long here. James on Instagram. Hey, I run track and cross country in high school, but we do all our miles on the roads or track. So my legs take a beating and hokas feel really good, but I'm afraid they will make my legs weaker. What are your opinions? James on Instagram. Hokas, hokas, hokas. Okay, so here's the Evo Speed Goats. They are known for having a lot more cushion. Uh, James, I think it's smart to take care of your legs so you don't get a stress fracture or you don't feel like your legs are beat up. Like if you're training in a big city and all your only option is pavement, I think Hoka's is a good option. And I would just also add that I don't think Hoka's will make your legs weaker. Um, some of the best ultra runners in the world wear Hoka's exclusively and they, I think they're, they're plenty strong. I think it, it really comes down to the volume that you're running for your leg strength. And I would say though, a shoe like a, you know, a New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel or 
a shoe that is a little more nimble, or like the Skechers uh, Razor 3 that I have here, a shoe that has a little more um, nimbleness to it, flexibility to it, will fire or strengthen your feet a little bit more. So like those little muscles and the tendons and ligaments in your feet. And that's why I do think walking around your, your house barefoot is a good thing. If you can walk around your house barefoot on a regular basis in socks, um, I have hardwood floors, so I do struggle a little bit with this, but um, it's good just to fire those little muscles in your feet. So I do think this, compared to this, I think this will help strengthen your feet a little bit more, which is a good thing, but you, if, if you want to run in hokas, I think you can make up for the lack of flexibility by getting a stability disc or a foot log or just simply, again, walking around your house barefoot to help fire those little muscles in your feet as much as possible. Good question, James, on Instagram. Thank you, everyone, for this week's edition. I don't know. I guess I'm signing off like it's a TV show. For this week's edition of the Demore Global Running Q&A, uh, again, we will try and do this uh, once a week on Saturdays question of the day what questions do you have for me and i will do my best to answer as many of them as possible next saturday sound good oh i know it was long but hopefully you can just listen to this in the background while you're doing something else maybe you're out running and if you are i hope you're having a good one all right everyone signing off throwing it back to answering your questions on the right in the last time we did this and then on the left uh live stream so they are going to be returning soon to the channel and uh I'm going to throw it back to a live stream from earlier in 2019. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.